I wanted to make a video and share with you all our IVF journey um, and everything that we had to go through in order to get Ella. Um, I have a couple pages of notes here, so I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. Um, I'll try and make it as quick as I can, and I'm going to insert some pictures throughout the video as well. Um, so I'll start with a little backstory. Dustin and I got married in June of 2015, and we started trying to have a baby right away after we got married. Um, we tried for about a year until we went to the OB and told them like we weren't having any success. So they started me on some infertility medications, letrozole and metformin, and we tried that for about a year, still with no success. Until May of 2017, we ended up getting a positive pregnancy test and we were really excited. Um, we announced it to our family and everything. We posted it on Facebook. A couple days after we had announced it, we found out that unfortunately it was an ectopic pregnancy. Um, so after that, we decided to go see an infertility specialist. And my first appointment with him, he did blood work and he also ordered a hysterosalpingogram. And that's a test where they have to insert dye in through the cervix into the uterus and it goes through the fallopian tubes and it just shows everything. And um, on that test, he's seen that my uterus was a heart shape when it's supposed to be the shape of a triangle. So it had like a little septum in the middle um, and he had to go in and fillet the top of that and they inserted a catheter to hold it up so it would heal so my uterus would be the right shape. Um, because they were pretty sure that's why I ended up having the ectopic pregnancy in the first place. So after six weeks of recovery from that surgery at my follow-up appointment, the doctor told me that he had noticed Dustin's insurance actually had an allowance for IVF of $10,000. And he said that he thought IVF would be our best option in order to have a baby and that he would help us the best that he could. Dustin and I talked and we ended up deciding to do it and we never knew how long of a road it would be for us to get there even though we it was successful on our first try which is a lot of people they have to try two or three times and sometimes it doesn't even work after that so we were very blessed to have it work on our first try. So my surgery was in October of 2018 and now we're in February of 2019 and we got our medicine ordered and now we're ready to start the cycle. Um, the nurse at the doctor's office told me that the insurance would pay, um, would pay for the medicine that I had to have, but they were wanting to charge $7,000, which would take up most of what the insurance was covering for the IVF procedure. So she recommended that we go overseas and order the medication, like offline. Um, so we ended up doing that because it was way cheaper. It was only $1,500 ordering it from Europe compared to the $7,000 that the insurance wanted to charge for the medicine here in the United States. So we had to wait for my cycle to start. Um, we got the baseline blood work done, the baseline ultrasound done. And on March 31st was when I started my injections. I had to do injections, I think, like a few times a day. I can't remember exactly how many times a day. And I started a Facebook page so that we could update our friends and family throughout the entire process. So we did the injections for about nine days into my stomach and also going back and forth to the doctor's office which was about 45 minutes away from our house. They were monitoring my hormone levels and doing ultrasounds. So what the injections are of the hormones is they're trying to get your body to create as many eggs as possible during the cycle for them to be able to retrieve. So um, as they're watching the eggs grow once they get to a specific size they give you an exact day and time that you have to do what they call a trigger shot. The nurse called me April 8th and told me, okay, tonight at 8.30, you have to do your trigger shot. So I went with my mom to my work. I worked at a nursing home for one of the nurses to be able to give me the injection because the other injections just in the stomach, I had no problem giving, but this one had to be done in my back. 
Um, so I wasn't able to do that one myself and nobody felt comfortable enough to be able to do that to me. After I did the trigger shot, they give you one day of rest and then the next day um, is the day that they do the egg retrieval. They were able to retrieve six eggs um, and then they fertilize them right there in the office that day. Um, they call you the next day and they tell you how many of your eggs were fertilized and they grade them based on how good they look. So we had two, we had one double A, which ended up being Ella. Um, we had two A's, we had a B, we had two B's and I think we had one E. And then they just continued to watch them for the next five days. We did a five day transfer to make sure that they were healthy and growing. Um, our transfer day was April 15th. Um, our original plan was to have two embryos implanted and we would have probably had twins. But the doctor told us that he didn't really feel comfortable. He said that he would do it if we wanted to, but he didn't really feel comfortable with how small I am and how good the eggs looked. He, he knew that they, it would probably be twins and he was afraid that I would have a lot of difficulty during the pregnancy. And the risk of preterm labor would be really, really high. So he actually left the room and he told me, and because Dustin was in the room with me when they did the transfer, and he told us to talk it over and decide what we wanted to do. We decided just to do one embryo, so they brought in the picture of the little embryo, Ella. <laughs> And um, they transferred her in. We said a, we gave her a little pep talk and we said a little prayer over her. And then they sent me home after the transfer and told me to rest as much as I could to give her a chance to implant. Our pregnancy test was scheduled for April 29th, but a couple of days before that, I started getting really sick. Um, my stomach was getting really big and... I was having a hard time breathing, so I called the doctor's office. They warned me about something called hyperstimulation, so they told me to come in and get checked out for that. And when I got there, I was pretty symptomatic with that. My heart rate was elevated, um, and they did an ultrasound, and they showed a lot of fluid on my stomach. At the beginning of this whole process, I started, I was at 155 pounds, and now, when I went into the doctor that day, I was at like 170, um, so that indicated that I had a lot of fluid on me. The doctor decided that he was going to have to um, drain it out, and he said that either meant going in vaginally with a needle and draining it out, or um, putting in a catheter in my stomach and my side to drain out the fluid. He decided on doing the catheter because he was worried that if he just went in with a needle that my stomach would keep filling up with fluid and that he would have to do it again. So he put the catheter in and sent me home. The next morning when I woke up, the catheter wasn't draining right. So I called the office and they sent me to the emergency room. They ended up being able to get the catheter flushed out so it was draining again and they decided to keep me overnight. Um, that night in the hospital, the drain ended up falling out of my stomach, so um, they had to go in vaginally and drain the fluid off of my stomach anyway, and that ended up helping a lot. So in total, they ended up draining 16 liters of fluid off of my stomach from the catheter and then from when they went in with the needle. And at this point, Dustin and I still didn't know if we were pregnant yet. Um, they did an ultrasound in the hospital there too, and they were able to see a gestation sac. They said that was a really good sign, but they couldn't tell if it was like a, a viable pregnancy yet or not. But they said it looked like I was about five weeks pregnant. Because I was doing a lot better after they drained all the fluid off of me, they just kept a really close eye on me for the next couple of weeks. Um, at my eight week checkup with them, we were able to see the heartbeat for the first time and because everything looked normal and good, they were able to release me to a regular OB. Um, so it was kind of really bittersweet because they had taken such good care of me at the infertility specialist. and after everything that we had already gone through. But the OB that we did end up going to was pretty awesome. They did an amazing job for both of the deliveries with Ella and with Max. 
And that was our IVF journey and what we had to go through to get Ella. Um, if you guys had any questions about anything that I said in the video, just drop them in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them in our next video next week. Um, I am going to insert a little slideshow of some ultrasound pictures of Ella and just some fun pictures I took of her with the syringes that I had to use um, just for her to look back on when she's older. I just thought it would be kind of fun. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you all next week. Love you all. Bye.